I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, and welcome back to Niagara Pro Tips. Today I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the differences between frozen and dynamic slots, how we can change those slot facets, and how that might help us by updating how the field editors might be shown. I'll also wrap up today by showing a practical example using the event service to monitor for properties being added to the station and then taking some action such as setting the slot facets on a particular slot as well. I'll provide these examples as program objects or the event service in a zip file which you should be able to download from the YouTube video. Just look under the description of the video and there should be a link there to get the zip file. All right. Let's get started with things. So I'm looking currently at a hierarchy named test in the property sheet view. And there's different definition com level components here that we use to build hierarchies. In this case, I'm just going to drag out a query level def. And when I expand the query level def, we'll see that there are a number of properties underneath that, one of which is the query property here. And this is really just a B string property. And you can see that the field editor width is a decent size, but maybe not quite as big as I might like it to be. When we take a look at the slot sheet view, we'll see that the query property here, along with the other three properties, are all frozen type property definitions. What that means is that those properties were defined by the developer in the source code at compile time. So there are some limitations on those. Mainly, when you right click on those, you don't have the ability to delete the slot or rename it or change the facets which you could do with a dynamic property. Uh, so if I go to add slot here and just leave the default new slot name here uh, and I add a Baja string which is the same type of property as the query property we'll see the main difference other than the name is that the definition is dynamic meaning the property was added at runtime and that does mean that when I right click on that I should have options like delete and rename and also config facets. If I look at the property sheet, we'll see that it's using the same style of field editor because they're both B string slots and there's no customized facets on how the field editor should be rendered. Going back to the slot sheet, I can right click on my new slot here and go to the facets editor. We can add a facet, uh, which would be the field width facet, and it'll be an integer and I'll assign a value to it, such as 110. You could also use other facets that affect the string field editor, like maybe uh, the multi-line facet. The multi-line facet happens to be a Boolean facet, and it would, we would want to set the value to true. Uh, clicking OK, you'll see that now those facets are shown in the slot sheet for the new slot. And when I go to the property sheet now, we'll see that the field editor for the new slot is much wider, and it's multi-line as well, which may make this field editor easier to use to enter information into. I'd like to do the same uh, thing to the query property here to make it larger so that I can see the text that I'm typing in more easily. And we've supported this since AX37, but it is a little bit maybe difficult to, to implement in that it typically requires some code or uh, adding the slots manually and typing in some things that might seem a little cryptic. So let me show you one way to go about uh, doing this. This example is using a simple program object, and again, I'll attach this program object to the video. Uh, this program object has an ORD, which points to the query level def under my test hierarchy, and I'm also specifying the query slot is the slot name that I want to apply the facets to. Then I simply have a B facets property here, which would allow me to uh, pick and easily change the facets that I want to assign to that frozen property. All I have to do at that point is invoke the execute action on the program object. And now I'll go back to the uh, slot sheet view on my query level def. And we'll see that for the query level, the query property uh, has now a field width of 110 and a multi-line equals true facet. Going back to the property sheet view now, I can see that this property field editor now is much wider and also multi-line, which may make things easier for me to view and edit the information. Now, if you're paying close attention, you'll have noticed that there is a new property under my query level def here, which is named slot facets with an underscore. 
And this is very similar to assigning display names to a component. Whenever we assign a display name to a, a, a slot on the component, it will add a display names property. It will be of type Baja name map. So we can see that type of behavior by right clicking and assigning a display name here. We'll see then that it added the display names property with the Baja name map. And so slot facets underscore and display names are kind of similar principles. It's just they're two different types of slots that are being added here. The name map is just uh, curly braces and then key value pairs with the name of the slots and the display names. And the facets map is somewhat similar to that. If we go take a look at the help and take a look at B facets map here, we'll see that uh, it even tells us that it's modeled after Baja name map. And you can see at the top here that the map is enclosed in curly braces and it has the key pairs inside of it, key value pairs. And the pairs are separated by a semicolon. And then each pair is consisting of an escape name and it's equal to some you know, facet value. Uh, so because uh, we're using the curly braces and the equal symbol here, uh, in the key value pair delimiters, then if you need to use these kinds of symbols like a uh, open or a closing curly brace or an equal symbol, uh, semicolon or a backslash, any of those characters in the actual facets declaration, you have to use a backslash character here as the escape or a control character to, to indicate that uh, we're, we want to interpret that as an actual string and it's not one of those other control characters that are already being used. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, if I clear the hidden flag from the slot facets here and then go back to the property sheet. And this is a little bit hard to see because the field editor again is, is a little small. So I'm going to copy this text and just paste it in here into this string slot where we can see it a little more easily. And you'll notice that there's an open and closing curly brace. And then there is semicolon character uh, right here, which is... Uh, the delimiter or the marker for the end of the definition for that slot. So the definition is the slot name here and then the equal symbol and then anything after the equal symbol are going to be the uh, encodings of those slot facets. So we'll see the name of the slot facet which is field width and then this is where that backslash escape character is going to come into play because I need to use an equal symbol and uh, we already have the one equal symbol here uh, indicating the start of the value. So we use a backslash equals and then I for integer and then colon 110 for the value. And there's a pipe symbol because I have more than one facet I'm trying to assign. So then the multi-line uh, facet name, again, the backslash equals to escape the equal symbol. This happens to be a Boolean, so you'll see the B character and then the value true or false in, in that final semicolon. So even if there's only one slot, we're setting slot facets on the same way uh, for the display names. You always use the semicolon as the delimiter to say that's the end of the value uh, and, and potentially the start of another key value pair. So you, you can obviously add these slots manually on the slot sheet instead of using a program object like I showed you. Or you could go into the batch editor perhaps and add a slot named slot facets underscore it's a b facets map and then set the value and you can do all that without having to use a program object or uh, use any code so to speak all right now uh, there's some other uh, places that uh, might be uh, nice to have wider field editors as well and one of those places that comes to mind for me is looking under the station's web service under the http header providers and specifically the content security policy there's a lot of properties here uh, where you can enter in different scripts and information to help uh, with HTTP header and security. You can see that I have to either scroll within the window or click and drag. And so those could uh, maybe be more helpful being a little bit wider as well. And looking at the slot sheet on the uh, content security policy, we'll see that these are all B string slots. They do have a security facet. Uh, additional directives already does have multi-line on it. Um, but none of these are setting the field width. Now, in my mind, uh, I felt like anything that ended kind of in SRC, like these slots, 
uh, all seem pretty similar and I probably want to make those wider but maybe not multi-line. Uh, the violation text might be helpful to be multi-lined uh, as well as uh, being longer. So in this case I have another program object example here and uh, really the I have two B facets properties the source facets and these slots that end in SRC and violation facets for the violation text slot. I didn't show you the program, the other program object, but again, obviously, I'll attach these to the video. Uh, but just taking a look at the program editor here, you'll see in this case, uh, somewhat simple, uh, just using a query looking for web services in the station. And then for each of those web services, I'll go through and resolve the content security policy here, and then uh, get the properties uh, from the content security policy, go through those and and based on the name of them, any of them that end with SRC uh, or the additional directives, I'll apply the uh, source facets. And if it's violation text, I apply the, the violation facets. So it's pretty simple code. And uh, when I invoke that action and we go back over and look at the uh, slot sheet, you'll see here that all of these now have a field width specified on those. And uh, the uh, violation text is actually multi-line as well. So if I go back to the property sheet view, now you can see that these fields are perhaps more usable, easier to read, uh, the, and enter the information in. So that's just another example of where you might want to change the slot facets or uh, assign additional slot facets, really, because you're not changing the hard-coded facets, but you're merging your own choices with uh, the hard-coded facets that the developer assigned. Right. Now, uh, it would be nice, though, that uh, you know, every time someone added perhaps a query level def component to a hierarchy that they didn't have to go to the slot sheet or use the program object to uh, change the query properties facets. And this is where a practical example of the event service maybe comes into play. And there's some uh, past Niagara Pro Tip videos on the event service, so be sure to go take a look at those for more information. I'm not going to get into the deep dark weeds about the event service, but it does have a, there's an event palette in the workbench here that we can open, which has the uh, service on it. And it so happens to be that I already have the event service in my station. And uh, we'll see that essentially what I did was drug out a component type source here from the palette. And when we look at a component type source, what you're, allowed, what you're able to do here is you pick a type spec. So in this case, I want to be notified whenever uh, something happens related to hierarchy query level def components. And all these different checkboxes here represent different events within the B component event uh, you know, lifecycle. So things like properties being added to the query level def or changed or facets being assigned or links being created and so forth. Uh, the one uh, event that I'm interested in particular at the moment is this component parented, which gets fired whenever the uh, uh, B query level def component gets added to something in the station. Uh, I've basically just got it linked up right now to a one shot to the fire action and that increments this counter here. So if I uh, clear the counter out and then looking at the hierarchy here at my uh, test hierarchy, anytime uh, a query level def component gets added to a hierarchy in the station, it fires the trigger and causes the counter to increment. And so that's not really doing anything. It's just a visualization saying this is detecting an event of something being added to the station, which is this query level def. And this event contains information about that uh, component being added. So uh, the idea here is that you can link the event topic to an action on the program object, perhaps. And in this case, uh, again, I'll, I'll include this as an example that you can download. But just taking a quick look at it, you see it's not very much code. Uh, basically, when the on process action gets invoked, it's being passed a, a B event from that topic on the uh, component type event source. And then I'm just checking to make sure that the event is actually an instance of a B component event, which I would expect it to be based on what's linked to the program object, but that's just kind of a little extra safety check. Uh, and uh, then basically I can get that source component, figure out if uh, what was added was a query level def object. And if it is, then we can assign the facets to uh, the query property here. Uh, to go ahead and automatically assign those facets. 
So the idea then is whenever someone drags a query level def out into the station, that event is detected and the slot facets are set automatically on that query property instead of them having to go do it manually. So again, just a practical example, trying to show you how you might utilize the event service in your station. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about frozen and dynamic slots and how you can uh, adjust those slot facets that might be helpful on your uh, field editor visualizations. Stay tuned for more Niagara Pro Tip videos in the future and have a wonderful day. Thank you.